I went from this to this in four months with calisthenics only and achieved five second front lever within a year of training. I've never done any sort of training before picking up calisthenics. As you can see, I started out pretty skinny, weighing about 53 kilos at 170 centimeter height. For reference, now I weigh about 63 kilos. As a disclaimer, the goal of mine is not bodybuilding, so this video might not be very helpful to those of you who just want to get big and muscular. Rather, this will give you an overview on how to start calisthenics and progress in an efficient and quick way, as well as build a strong transferable base for future skill work. I will not cover calories or supplements since the only thing I did was eat more protein understand that you need to eat more to grow especially uh, when your main focus is building muscle mass but from my experience this does not matter that significantly especially in the beginning because your body will grow anyways on top of that it is beneficial to stay relatively lean in calisthenic skills so eating a maintenance or even slight deficit will not thwart your progress that much all right let's get back to the journey the way it started is that one day I just looked in the mirror and thought, huh, I really dislike the way I look. Why don't I just change it? And that's how the journey basically started. The problem was that I struggled with really bad social anxiety after COVID, so going to the gym was definitely not an option. Around the same time, I stumbled across Chris Harrier's channel and came across the idea of progressions. This changed my whole perspective on training. Instead of doing 20 reps, I could simply up the progression once I can perform 10 with ease. Also, I got obsessed with form in each exercise, striving to perfect each progression before moving on to another. My ego definitely took a hit because of it, as 20 push-ups suddenly became 5, but it was definitely worth it. Now, my main rules for progress were to up the progressions when I could perform 8 perfect reps, because 8 to 12 is the range for hypertrophy. And I'm a lazy person, so there's no way I'm doing 12 when I can just do 8. I was taking 3 minute breaks in between sets, and my split was full body with 1 or 2 days of rest in between, depending on my muscle soreness. My workouts consisted of nothing but 3 sets of push-ups and 3 sets of pull-up progressions. This way, my workouts lasted no more than 30 minutes, making it really easy to stay motivated and build a habit and progress without any fatigue over time. Starting with pull-ups, I was doing jumping pull-ups with slow negatives because I did not have the access to palero bars or rings. Doing bodyweight rows could have been a better option, yet in the beginning your body adapts really quickly, so specificity definitely helps. Once I could do a couple pull-ups, the pull-up part of my workout looks something like this. The first set I would do a maximum number of pull-ups, followed by jumping pull-ups, until the reps in that set added up to 8, about one rep away from failure. Because in the second set I did not have strength to do, to do pull-ups anymore, I would do 8 jumping pull-ups, and here the way you adjust the difficulty is by the length of the negative. The last sets would be 8 jumping pull-ups, then some rows with a resistance band until I re reach complete failure. The last set is basically a drop set, where you want to reach failure at the 8th rep, then go down a progression, and down another, and down another. I would do down 3 progressions. For example, those of you who have the equipment, I'd recommend doing pull-ups into jumping pull-ups with slow negatives, into Australian pull-ups, into let's say, Australian pull-ups with a lesser weight. You can also use a resistance band, which may be the best way to progress, but in the beginning, because your body adapts so quickly, I prefer jumping pull-ups. This signals my body that I need to get much stronger and doesn't give a false sense of strength, as resistance bands do. Overall, it's great to do both options, maybe on different days, because resistance bands definitely help with the form. After my pulling, I moved on to push-ups, doing the same thing. Two sets of eight reps of the progression I can handle, and then last set pushing past failure, with incline push-ups with higher and higher elevation until I could not push while standing almost vertically. Once I could do three sets of clean push-ups, I moved on to pseudo-planche push-ups, 
meaning hands closer to the waistline. I personally believe that this way of progressing in push-ups is far more beneficial than decline, archer or one-arm push-ups as it allows for transferable strength later on to skills such as bent arm planche or planche or handstand push-ups. At this point my body could also handle longer workouts so I would throw in a handstand progression like a pike hold or wall walks in the beginning to build strength for, for future movements. For the push-ups, I would highly recommend keeping a strong protraction throughout the whole movement because this will make the push-up target your shoulders much more than your chest and since calisthenics is much more taxing on the shoulders, it is a good habit to build transferable strength since the beginning. Another huge advantage of such movement is that it allows you to strengthen and build mind-muscle connection with your scapula, which is arguably the most important thing in calisthenics. Skills like planche, back lever, 90 degree hold, 90 degree push ups require a strong protraction, while skills such as front lever require a strong retraction, which you will build with pull ups. This is why it is good to have a slight obsession with form from the beginning. My advice record yourself and focus on form over reps. I will make another video on these two basic movements in the future because there is a lot more to cover. Please note that there isn't really a correct way to do any exercise. For example, the push-ups that I'm talking about are really uncommon. When you think of push-ups, you think of a chest exercise. No one really keeps a full protraction. But it definitely helps with calisthenics in the sense that it trans is transferable to future skills that require a strong protraction throughout the whole movement. Now, the advantages of this method is that I progressed really fast, and I mean fast. In hindsight, the disadvantages were mainly the lack of endurance for higher rep ranges, though this does not really trouble me as I'm focused on strength skills anyway. Keep in mind that I am trying to convey the efficient and quick manner in which you can reach the skills as quickly as possible. If endurance is something you're looking for, then unfortunately this is not the video for you. My physique looked like this after about six months and that's where I completely stopped training for hypertrophy and started focusing on skills. I believe that when you can do three sets of eight pseudo planche push-ups from the waistline, hold a 90 degree hold, do some pike push-ups and also pull up three sets of 10, you're more than ready to start learning skills. Finally, Workout plan wise, I was doing full body every other day until I could do three sets of 10 push ups. Once I mastered the push ups, I started adding other exercises into it, and because of that, I could split the workouts into two days. On one day, I would be doing pull, on the other, I would be doing push. Alright, guys, thanks for watching. I'm happy to answer any questions in the comments, leave a like, subscribe to help me grow this channel. I'm planning to share my experience with calisthenics, the way I progressed from my experience, because the progressions were really quick and efficient, and a lot of it was transferable to my current skill work. Bye.